Hello, my name is Mike, and welcome to another game of Civilization V. Today, today I'm going to be trying something different. I'm going to be doing a team battle on a Pangaea landmass. So it's going to be seven civilizations against one. Seven random civilizations, including myself, against Shaka of the Zulus. And you might be saying, seven against one seems a bit unfair. Yeah, you're right, except the Zulus will have triple production in all cities and their borders will grow twice as fast. Now the odds have shifted in his favor. So let's see what happens. It looks like today I'll be playing as England, which is unfortunate because I'm mostly about naval domination, so not going to help too much against the Zulus. But it's not too bad. Let's see who else we have on our team. We have Korea, good for generating science and turtling. Great for defense against the Zulus. We have Venice. Okay, not bad. There are city-states in this game. He could puppet their cities. The Shoshone. Great for defending their own territory and turtling up, grabbing as much land as possible. Maybe if he builds the Great Wall, it'll be really difficult for Shaka to get to him. Rome. Giving Shaka a run for his money when it comes to spawning a bunch of cities. Yep, not bad. The Ottomans, another civilization mostly focused on navy domination, but he does have a decent army and a couple of unique land units, so he might put up a fight. And the Danish, unfortunately not going to be too effective on a Pangaea map, but does still have two unique units that could prove to be effective. Let's take a quick look at this map, shall we? I have myself here in England. And down here there is Denmark. Not sure exactly what's on the rest of this side of the continent, but then we have this little space of land separating these two giant land masses. So if Shaka wants to get to me, he'll have to go through Istanbul. And then we have the rest of them, Korea and Rome. And up here are some mountains, but there's also Venice. Venice is pretty much surrounded by mountains, so it's going to be difficult to get to him. The Shoshone, down here on the river. And I honestly don't know where Shaka is at the moment. But either way, to get to me, he's going to have to go through these mountains. So it's going to be tricky for him to get to me. If he gets to me, I might be the last one still alive. I think the hardest part might be getting through the Ottoman territory, because that is not the friendliest territory. But seeing as how all of my teammates have gone for liberty and honor and tradition, no one has gone for piety yet. Well, I'll go for piety, and I'll spread my religion to you guys. Well, this is odd. Shaka is up here, actually pretty close to me. I thought this landmass was kind of isolated, but I guess I didn't explore this territory. Maybe there is a small piece of land that connects us to him even still I, I imagine it's going to be difficult to get his army over here and Denmark is the first civilization to get a religion in this game yes they got Catholicism I noticed a while back that Denmark was going down the piety tree so I stopped and started going through tradition instead taking a look at our enemy to the west we have these two narrow passages of land leading to what Shaka currently has are seven cities starting to blossom into a very nice productive if not unfortunately near tundra and snow civilization yes Shaka has quite a few cities and they're all encroaching on my space right here on London <laughs> Okay, so let's take a moment and examine the battlefield. We have a bunch of marshy terrain that have to cross, and a river to get to my city, so some defensive terrain in my favor. I've got tradition, so I have more combat from the city, so it should do a decent amount of damage. And I have this pantheon, 30 health healed per turn, so I'm not going to fall too quickly, but I... I probably will fall, though. There are a lot of units. For now, I'll do what I can. 
survive one more turn. Every turn I survive is one more turn that my teammates can build up their civilization and prepare for war against Shaka later. So, this is good. This is fine. They keep coming, but I am destroying a few of them. Still staying together. Hold. Hold. York will fall. Lost a unit. Keep holding. That's one more turn that they don't succeed. Alright, I'm down to just two ranged units. My heavily damaged spearmen. And... Now I have a great general, but I don't think it's going to be enough. Certainly not enough to, to hold off these troops forever. But keep holding. Hold the line. Is it going to be enough? Hold for one more turn. Yep. Can I hold for one more turn? Nope, I lost London. We held out for a decent amount of time, but all that's left is York. I have three ranged units, my one spearman, and my great general. And they are trapped in London, now in enemy control. They have four ranged units and we really can't make any progress getting past them. They will die here. They will not survive. But let's put up one hell of a fight. <sighs> one of my archers and the great general was able to make it out. It was not easy because... As soon as he took it, he completed the Great Wall, so I had to leave one space at a time per turn. But I'm back in York with two ranged units, one spearman, and my great general. Just gotta hold out. Keep on holding out as long as possible. We are holding out for dear life here in York. My great general constructed a citadel, which has proven to be a pretty effective deterrent for his forces. We got three ranged units. They all are getting healed quickly by the Pantheon and this guy who's got a medic promotion. So we're holding strong, putting up one hell of a fight. Shaka is not taking York easily. Turn 172. He cannot take York. He keeps taking pot shots at me with his composite bowman. But this guy heals 50 health per turn with all his bonuses. So yeah, good luck destroying him. A Shoshone Pathfinder has found himself in the middle of a conflict he did not anticipate. Surrounded by swordsmen and pikemen, he seems to have made a fatal mistake. We will do what we can to protect him, but we can make no guarantees. Turn 179. The Shoshone troop has successfully eluded capture, and York still stands. Turn 196. We have been at officially peace for a while, but we have not stopped improving our defenses. We have four ranged units, a trireme, and two melee units protected by a citadel. I vive! And here we go. Very well. I may be doomed, but I will not go down without a fight. Oh. I was hoping to upgrade my troops before this happened, but I did not have enough money. I have one pikeman, one longbowman, three crossbowmen, and one spearman. Lost a unit. The remaining units are adjacent to my city and will heal quickly, but how long will that last? Turn 215. They have us completely surrounded. All we can do is hunker down and hope they can't make it through. Turn 216. All we have left are one pikeman, one crossbowman, one longbowman, and one trireme.
Turn 218. We stand strong. Shaka is unable to take my city. He cannot do hardly any damage to my pikemen, doing one, two, three points of damage for each attack. Surrounded by a citadel, buffed by a great general, constantly healed by the pantheon of the city, rebuffed by the long bowman, he is not able to take my city. Suffering an immense unhappiness penalty, he is not able to take my city. Turn 223. York still stands. Catapults are being destroyed before they can come close to the city by the long bowmen. All other units are destroyed when they get close to the citadel, and all of their attacks fail when thrown against the walls of the citadel. Turn 229. York still stands. Two ranged units take pot shots at any passing troops, and the citadel cannot be breached. The entrance to the city from the ocean has been blocked by one trireme that refuses to move, no matter how many tempting pieces of bait Shaka dangles in front of me. York stands. Turn 238. The politicians have decided that there is no need for war and have forged a temporary peace agreement. Nevertheless, we shall remain vigilant because we know the truth. They are after us, and no matter what they do, York will stand. An unfortunate turn of events has occurred. Shaka has sent a great prophet in my direction. If he converts York, it will fall very soon because I won't have that Pantheon bonus healing me. So there is only one actual solution to this. I must capture that great prophet and by doing so, start a war. Yes. Your army is massive. We cannot hope to defeat you. And yet, we shall because we have no choice. Turn 266. York still stands, and the war has resumed. The captured prophet has been forced to construct a holy site, and then we killed him. Current military status. One pikeman, two longbowmen, one trireme, and one city protected by two citadels. And York still stands. Turn 271. York still stands. Our cotton was plundered, but our ivory has been re-added to the empire. So we still remain happy, and we still remain vigilant. It feels as if we have killed thousands of Zulu troops, but they keep coming, and we will still stand. Turn 277. York still stands. Yet Copenhagen has fallen to the Zulu. The Danish capital birthplace of the magnificent Catholicism is now in Zulu possession, and it is only a matter of time until all of the Danish have been exterminated. Turn 280. Peace has been made with Shaka once again, a very fragile and almost inevitable temporary peace. Turn 302. Shaka has stolen part of York's territory. It puts him right up against the edge of our city. He even took the fort that we constructed out of desperation. And now, now we are unsure of what happens next. Turn 343. Shaka seems to have subsided his rage. He has not started a war. He has not tried to conquer anybody, really. It makes me wonder if he's going for a domination victory because he certainly is not going for a scientific victory. He is about 10 technologies behind our team, so he needs to do something or he is fated to lose. Shaka has a military that is about four times what the rest of us have combined, and yet he does not use it. It has been 50 turns of peace and prosperity. Shaka has fallen behind in science and seems to have lost his lust for destruction. Turn 400. 
I think England has gone as far as she can go. I cannot upgrade my pikemen to lancers because I have no horses. And I cannot upgrade my caravels or my galeuses to ship of the lines because I do not have iron. And even once I have access to the machine gun technology, I still won't have the funding to actually make the upgrade. And so I stand, York, stagnant. She has gone as far as she can go. This is what York will be until the day she dies. The people that like to smile the most. It's not often you see Shaka on the top of that list. Very odd. Turn 425. York still stands. The Zulus have not done much of anything. They have caught up technologically. They have made sure that their empire is not in financial disarray. But we still maintain the technological lead and will continue to do so until they act. While the world religion was not Hinduism, sorry Venice, standing army tax was indeed passed. The Zulus will start to suffer even worse than I am suffering, haha. -ha. For the record, the Zulus were making a net profit of 50 gold per turn before that resolution passed. Now they are losing 400 gold per turn. Turn 435. Shaka has declared war on us. He is at our shores with his triremes, and he is at our front door with his knights and machine guns. We are armed only with bows and pikes and what little artillery we have on our ships. This may be our last stand. Turn 436. We have wiped out a few of their triremes, but their land units are still coming at us, and they have unimaginable strength. I do not know how long we can keep this up. One of our longbowmen was gravely injured last night. He may not make it to tomorrow. Turn 437. Our longbowmen did not survive the night. Now we are down to just two. Their army marches towards us, but York still stands. Turn 438. There was a conflict last night. We lost another one of our ranged units. It hurt us immensely. We were able to take out two of their troops, though but I suspect they feel nothing. Turn 441. Our single caravel has defeated numerous triremes. It is amazing how weak their ships are and how quickly they fall into the sea. However, their land troops are something else entirely. We are weak. We have very few troops left. And the ones that we do have are gravely wounded even being protected by a citadel, will not stop the onslaught. Several cities have fallen. Roman cities, Danish cities, and Korean cities. But York still stands. Turn 445. It was a terrible siege last night. There were so many corpses. And yet, among them, some of them were ours. We lost our rifleman unit today. The entire battalion wiped out. Turn 447. A great general arrived last night, but I fear it may be too little too late. York is very, very badly damaged, but she still stands. Turn 448. We lost almost all of the entire army last night. Our, our one ship is gone. We only have Agalius and one archery unit left. We are about to fall. But let it be known that at turn 448, York still stood. Turn 449. York is starving. We only have one ship left and no other units. The great general will go down with the city and York will no longer stand.
On turn 456, the Ottomans lost their capital, Istanbul, to the Zulu menace. On turn 464, the standing army tax was repealed by a bunch of morons. That same turn, wine was banned. There is no wine in Shaka's territory. The people with the pointiest sticks. On our side, Pocatello has the most, with 5,800. Shaka has 186,000. 700. This game carried on for several hours, and I wish I could tell you that our team won. That the last stand at York actually meant something, but that would not be true. The Zulu army had grown immeasurably powerful, and yet, in the end, they chose not to use it. They kept their small city-state pets around to watch and bear witness as they won the game with a science victory. <laughs>